Oh, thank goodness. The teacher in room 328 just called. He heard the shooter going by his room, headed in that direction. That's over here. Can someone shut down that fire alarm? Keep an eye down the hall. He may have moved. Good. There are four of us. We can move out in full contact formation. Does everyone have their vests? This guy is serious. He's here to hurt people. We have to figure out a way to take him down or at least draw his fire away from the kids. You and the trooper, take the wings. Remember to stay a couple of feet away from the wall. That'll keep you away from any ricochets. You, take the rear guard and handle our communications. Take the radio. Let us know when more backup arrives. The dispatcher said that EMS will be here any minute. Good. Let's move. Lock the door. Sergeant Wazinski will be here shortly. Got an intersection. Breaking right. Breaking left. your hands on top of your head and go out the door at the end of this hallway. Do it now. Run. Go. Go. We're sending two female students out your way. We also have a report of a wounded teacher in the bathroom at the end of the main hallway. We also passed the classroom with no card. Room 311. It needs to be checked out. We copy that. This is Sergeant Wisinski. I'm the on-scene commander. We've got a rescue team ready to go. They'll check the restroom and room 311. Suspect is down. We need 
Medical attention here immediately. We're in front of room 328. Standby, a rescue team is on its way. Bring your team in. Let's do a thorough check before we start evacuating these kids. I'm George Sweat, Secretary of the North Carolina Department of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention. What you have just seen is a dramatization of something we hope will never happen here in North Carolina. But if it does, educators, law enforcement, and emergency responders must be ready and they must work together. Let's go back now and take a look at what these people did beforehand and on the day of the incident to try to minimize loss of life in this lockdown situation. In some classrooms, teachers don't have a way to contact the office through an intercom system or a telephone installed in the classroom. If that's the case, school administrators should develop a plan and decide how teachers should get in touch with the office in the event of an emergency. Whether you are communicating with the office or law enforcement officials, choose your words carefully. Be specific about what you have seen. Don't speculate or exaggerate. Remember, every moment counts. Having a predetermined verbal code for a lockdown is crucial so that school administrators can communicate with teachers without causing a panic among students. The same code should be used throughout the school district. When the code for a lockdown procedure is announced, teachers should set an example by speaking to students clearly and with a sense of calm. Substitute teachers and support staff, including custodial and cafeteria workers, should also be informed about the code and other response tactics. Office personnel should make sure that students who are not in classrooms are directed to the nearest available room. 